Welcome everyone. I just wanted to do a quick uh, post on the misconceptions between estrogen and progesterone in the cycle. What we tend to see, and specifically in some strength and conditioning uh, blogs, and I've seen this a couple of times now, is the, the misconception that progesterone and the luteal phase is responsible for the uh, incidence of PMS. PMS is probably one of the easiest things to avoid uh, within a woman's cycle based upon two st uh, distinct factors. PMS usually happens for two primary reasons. One of those is because of low blood sugar states. And the other one of those is because of usually the uh, imbalance between the amount of estrogen that's being produced and the amount of progesterone that's being produced. It's quite common for uh, two different types of low blood sugar states to occur. <laughs> During high production of estrogen, which as you're going to see here, uh, tends to occur at the beginning of the cycle, and particularly during the proliferative phase, estrogen's primary role is one of proliferation. It's there to thicken the uterus. It's there to increase more tissue. And that's one of the problems why there are so many issues related to an excess of estrogen and also the incidences of cancer uh, and other biological disturbances related to an excess of estrogen. If there is an abundance of estrogen, it will make you crave carbohydrates because it will push you into a low blood sugar state uh, more often than not. Another time where you might crave carbohydrates is if you have a really good uh, menstrual cycle and hormones are in balance, if you have an adequate production of progesterone, and bearing in mind that these graphs are not re representative of each other, um, estrogen is measured in nanograms and progesterone is measured in picograms and often um, uh, hundreds, perhaps even a thousand times more uh, of progesterone than there is of estrogen. Um, and what happens is when, when we produce adequate amounts of progesterone, because progesterone has such a, a, an important factor on how we use our oxidative system, so our basic biology of our aerobic system or our anaerobic system, but also really in a nutshell, how we choose to use carbohydrates. One of the pre-diabetic states that we have uh, which is, is a, a fancy word that some medics use, but pre-diabetic states is really the loss of uh, a, the ability to use carbohydrates and the shift to using fats as a fuel, which in itself is a stress response. So when, when there's a good system available, progesterone increases the amount of carbon dioxide available because there is more carbohydrate being used. And this in itself is a hallmark of a good, good metabolic response. So if you're burning through more carbohydrate, if you don't have enough carbohydrate available or blood glucose available, then you're going to crave carbohydrates. Generally, the negative symptoms associated with PMS come from an excess of estrogen. If you give uh, enough food, enough quality carbohydrate throughout the cycle, most of the low blood sugar states to be, can be avoided. Then if you're still left with the negative symptoms, you're usually looking at a factor of, of an excess of estrogen, which is decreasing the amount of progesterone that's available. You can see here for the luteal phase, we have the corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum is a, a structure that produces phenomenal amounts of progesterone. And it's primarily there because if... Um, a woman uh, has sex during this phase and gets pregnant, the idea of proge enough progesterone available is to counteract the negative effects of estrogen. Estrogen is a building tissue and that's why it's used to condition the uterus. What the role of progesterone is, is to make sure that the um, there is implantation um, of the, the fertilized egg. And often when there's an excess of estrogen going on, it be, the uterus can become hypoxic. Now we know that when there's an adequate amount of progesterone available, progesterone will make sure that this doesn't occur. And in fact, that there's a, this is a, the subject of another blog post, is that two primary reasons why women tend to not go full term and perhaps have a miscarriage is because often there's not enough progesterone available. This can also come from having too much estrogen. And we talked about the issues of hypoxia and perhaps the fetus not being able to get enough of oxygen to the system. So what we need to do is stop blaming this area and blaming progesterone as being the problem when in fact estrogen and estrogen dominance, a lack of carbohydrates and a low blood sugar state are primarily the reason why uh, the negative symptoms of, of PMS tend to occur. I tend to find them with most of my clients occurring here just before, just here as, as progesterone's lowering down and estrogen is on the rise again. But when this usually kicks in, it, it can it can have a number of negative effects. 
So first thing that you need to do, if you are under a lot of stress or you do exercise, or if you're any normal human being in general, you need to eat adequate amounts of carbohydrate. If you still get PMS, uh, evaluation of estrogen and progesterone, you don't necessarily need to go away and do tests. You can actually just take some supplemental progesterone, but speak to somebody who understands that. Sometimes when this isn't occurring particularly well, then we need to look at other other factors. Estrogen, um, because it promotes a stress response, can also inactivate thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone is essential for helping estrogen to clear. And if you are, if you do have these problems where eating enough carbohydrate, taking enough progesterone isn't an issue, then you probably need to think about looking um, at other metabolic issues and other hormone issues that might be driving this. And certainly, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, and thyroid all have a, 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 an impact because they tend to be wrapped up in each other. And when this isn't working correctly, estrogen and cortisol will tend to suppress thyroid uh, production. And certainly it's well known that cortisol will inhibit the binding of progesterone to the progesterone receptor. So in a nutshell, to wrap this up, hopefully you've got something out of this, is that if estrogen is dominant, it will decrease blood sugar levels. If you have a good working system and you're producing lots of progesterone and you don't have enough energy available it will push you to a, a lower blood sugar state which will increase the stress hormones and we go back to this cycle again so let's not start let's not keep blaming progesterone um the, the luteal phase for the problem let's understand the mechanics of what a good blood sugar regulation keeping estrogen in check and keeping progesterone on the rise can do um hopefully you found that useful and if you have any questions feel free to post some questions below Thank you very much.